I'm a sophomore. I am a leader of Slam Poetry Society, and we have been approached to do some Slam Poetry for you before the event with Ray McGovern. So I'm going to read a poem by Carlos Gomez called Wordsworth. Wordsworth. They say sticks and stones can break bones, but words can never hurt, yet I've seen stones and sticks break lips and bones and hips after words commanded such action or seen violence in metaphor or pushed in minds before children were four years or four months old. Now tell me, what are words worth? Children learn about subject, object, and predicate, symbolically constructing sentences in American classrooms where white standards are taught as subjects while black students are treated like objects destined to be subjected to life sentences because of semantic switch-ups and that set statutory precedents. Now tell me, what are words worth? And then it comes to naming. Uniqueness is distorted to be invisibility instead of celebrating them. Beautiful names like Asangaiso, Owusu, or Tokufu become that black kid over there, become that gangster over there, become that nigger over there. Now tell me, what are words worth? Then grammar school students get ideology-laced grammar lessons, memorizing hegemonic definitions and connotations through pictures and intonations inflecting oppression with staple tongues and muted voice boxes. They start with socially constructed polarities called antonyms, and end with strategic synonyms insidiously selling minds to white history paid for with words we tattoo into subconscious crevices of our consciences. And it all started for me with dichotomies, framing opposed pairs <laughs> Framing opposed pairs with the good as the former and the bad as the latter, good and evil, light and dark, white and black, pure and tainted, civilized and savage, and then I was fed with synonyms. Progress equals betterment, brown equals primitive, fat equals undisciplined, poor equals stupid, law equals justice. Now tell me what are words worth. We're brought up to believe in adverbs that modify actions, used to euphem euphemize and pacify them, passive voicing third-hand revisions like, millions of native peoples were killed unintentionally, not by anyone in particular, but they died, or slave owners were understandably controlling or necessarily brutal, and before we know it, nouns are becoming pronouns without the people's consent, like polytheistic students reading about one capitalized god, wondering which one overthrew the others, or Latinos learning of US anointing ourselves the only Americans or me, watching a propagandized phrase like the war on terror, granted legitimization through pronoun glory on CNN, now tell me what are words worth. And some think these things, these thoughts apply only to English class, as if science and math don't derive from the same path in American past that bleeds the wrath of industrial class struggles and oppressive fads, that teach us socioeconomics and math class to pare down graphs, placing pairs in graphs, writing paragraphs and SATs about SUVs so we see the rich as deserving and those in need as perturbing. Now tell me what are words worth. Code words signify the marginalized, letting the hateful be normalized, spoken through glances and thoughtful eyes that disguise disgust with laughed off comments like, what a faggot, or she's a bitch, and look at those tits on, the, on that greasy spig. Do you speak a, speak a English? Words can hit hard and lead to violent fits, pounding fists or slip wrists. Now tell me what are words worth. Our father is named Uncle Sam, our teacher is named Webster, our slave master is named English. My name was stolen before I was born by a language that wasn't and isn't mine. Now tell me what are words worth. Words are powerful, words are oppressive, words are liberating. Words are ideology and hegemony and stories and culture. Words are priceless but often undervalued, poured out endlessly with little thought, but always at a cost. So think before you talk and make sure it's worth it. Woo! Hi, my name is Christopher Wiedemann. I'm a sophomore. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Students for Justice in Palestine. Woo! <laughs> and I'm going to read a poem called The Low Road by Marge Piercy. Um, this was one of Howard's his favorite poems. What can they do to you? Whatever they want. They can set you up, they can bust you, they can break your fingers, they can burn your brain with electricity, blur you with drugs so you can't walk, can't remember, they can take your child, wall up your lover, they can do anything you can't stop them from doing. How can you stop them? Alone you can fight, you can refuse, 
You can take what revenge you can that they roll over you. But two people fighting back, but two people fighting back to back can cut through a mob. A snake, snake dancing file can break a cordon, an army can meet an army. Two people can keep each other sane, can give support, conviction, love, massage, hope, sex. Three people are a delegation, a committee, a wedge. With four, you can play bridge and start an organization. With six, you can rent a whole house, eat pie for dinner with no seconds, and hold a fundraising party. A dozen make a demonstration, a hundred fill a hall. A thousand have solidarity and your own newsletter. Ten thousand, power and your own paper. A hundred thousand, your own media. Ten million, your own country. It goes on one at a time. It starts when you care to act. It starts when you do it again and they say no. It starts when you say we, and you know who you mean, and each day you mean one more. Hey guys, my name is Ivan and I'm a sophomore. Um, I'm also a part of the Slam Poet Society. So today I woke up, had a little bit of bad news. Um, one of my best friends committed suicide last night. And I was looking through his Facebook, seeing the pictures that made me happy to see him smiling. But I found this poem that he wrote three years ago. Um, it's almost exactly three years ago, let's read it. Right. It's called Nerves Cell. Swallowed by the darkness, and the light bulb above my head is dead. How do I spark it? I think I got an idea. Then, as I'm sitting back, nerves cell and send signals to the past, managing to merge the thoughts of this and that, and then it snaps, that is synapse, connection, lost One would have never thought it. But, they, but here's the synopsis. They claim this and they claim that. Is that what you've heard? Well, my mind tells that I can buy because my nerves sell. Oh, that explains it. That explains it well. Second to pass, and I reckon that there was something wrong with the picture. So I tried to find the source of deception, and to my surprise, what had brought me down was what I believed was my lifter. That glowing ball of gravity that was grabbing me wasn't doing so to prove it glowed. It grabbed me to shut, to short the circuits of my light bulb and say, who are you to glow? And who would have known that I, was once, that I was safe and sound, but as I found my way around, it all, it all came back full circle, and the truth came around. Now I believed that, I believed what they believed, I believed it was right. Because it's crazy how the darkness spread from what I perceived as the light. The signs were all dead. I should have ring back when I heard the first bell. If I thought it, then I bought it. I guess that's why my nerves settled. Hi. Um, so I'm The same as every Sunday, my mother asks me to go to church with her, and forgetting my baptism and communion and Catholic guilt, I quickly decline and she slowly wilts into disappointment. Yes, my mother is a flower who has bloomed, given up, and been devoured by guerrilla warfare and pooped at top by a cold, cold world who seemed to have forgot that she was only blooming, and as Reagan and Romney promised champagne to trickle down like rain on a famine nation, they funded slaughter and rape under the tin roofs of my mother's town, blood-stained cotton gowns of girls she went to school with. And so she emigrated to the country that enabled her suffering, freedom pending, freedom assumed, freedom buffering, and she joined the sea of thankless nine to five, except my mother starts her day at four in the morning, rising unseen as history is forming all she has been through into nothing. So getting up early for church on Sundays isn't much to her, but mom, I don't know whether I'm amazed or disappointed that you can still believe in anything because America, somebody else is beautiful, fun to hear destruction. So where was God when the soldiers raped the girls on the Salvador and 
Where was God when they shot Salvador and Amdan? Where was God when we fronted apartheid? And where is God when we commit cultural genocide? And where is God when we torture innocent people for information that will never matter? My views are scattered. I want to believe that there is something beyond this, but there is no circle of hell deep enough for a racist or a president whose drones kill children or companies who make money off of illegal settlements or people who have all of the evidence but choose to keep quiet. We can't expect a riot to just happen. We need to mobilize ourselves before they dissolve us into young, proud citizens and Praying won't stop our taxes from deepening the wounds of victims. It's funny how those who have seen want to be blind, so mama's gonna have to be a no again. I can't go to church with you this Sunday because if there's anything I believe in, it's the power of a determined people, not of any divine priest under a steeple. Hi guys, um, my name is Sam, I'm also part of Slam. Uh, I apologize if you've heard this one before. Uh, if you don't like it, feel free to come and talk to me after. If you do like it, also feel free to come and talk to me after. Pretty cool. Uh, this is called I'm Good at Sex. Everybody's listening, aren't they? I'm good at sex. I'm good at eating, breathing, blinking, sleeping, lying, you name it. Just like sex. All the things you think I need to be good at, I'm ready, willing, and practiced. After all, you name it. The worst thing I'll do is roll up, potentially put on some funk. But in my mind, I'm essentially a celibate monk. Yet the mission to prove my worth has been cursed to be measured by how well I reverse from missionary to back shots on top of my roommate's bunk. Who would have thunk? And I can do it. I know I can, apparently. All it takes is me fitting the fantasies fed to the me's and you's and views of sex scenes and movies and lines that are replaced doing with you're the only one truly. Can't you feel it? We're all trying to be whole, everyone filled with this Oedipus complex. Thus the words I say stand no contest to the way I can make you feel, apparently. But you know, I'll move and groove and find a rhythm and ride a rhythm, go stop, go until you just can't stop and then pop you come to your senses, and the clarity is mistaken, it's overwhelming. All of a sudden you're real hungry, tired, won't shower, cry to your mom about the time your dog died, and you hadn't said goodbye, like why and how, but I want to snuggle when another's touch only begs. Why aren't you comfortable? And you feel it in your liver. You thought you found this thing called love, but it's just a fucking sliver. And now it's hard to look at your partner. And God forbid I let the ideas of myself be diminished, so I'll just go with, we both finished. But don't blame them. The ones who allowed you to meet your naked self, who made time stop and got rid of all clocks for you to feel the internal tick, who blocked the timeline pictures for you to see the mirrors in your skin reflect how it took two becoming one for you to feel love and think run, so I'm done, this is no game. Yet where is my shame in admitting I play? It helps me write poems, one side of me will always say. Justifying the lust of mine, just think what side is it now here trying to impress every girl in here out of these same realizations. Read between the fabric and lines we have such fabricated sensations when I need someone else for love to come over fucking cuddle with myself. How can you blame me for thinking every one of you is beautiful? All my dudes do. The creatures I see myself hiding behind who creep a philosophy as personal time but don't see their own actions, go figure, never scared to be blind. Recreating each other's armor pride, raised by mothers and fears of our peers, the real person inside, thinking it's a safe place. Lying on our backs and in your face, even to our closest brothers. You know the type, some real undercover lovers. So I usually hide this on the page, but tonight I try and bring the real person on stage with funny jokes and well-rehearsed yet unheard rage. Besides, who am I to dedicate unlocking such a cage? We all want to, but no, sorry, it's much too costly to change direction. Demands for more pension and attention, life's highway with increasing tolls. Wondering why life speeds by as we just keep driving our gender roles. 
So for everyone who takes the time to present themselves, gifts being fit for someone else's wish, who do anything to get the digits and win a ring because the achievement makes bliss, I know the feeling. Got a bunch of blowjobs before my teens add that to the list. This is no joke, I reminisce. Like a lost boy, my purity, my virginity. At 14, the only thing that he busted was my immaturity. Which means by now I've had my fun, told stories to friends and felt like a scum. And with plenty of right, I've put it in a verse. And in plenty of nights, nice, I've felt the inverse, objectified. What difference are these organs then? So now it is I'm petrified by everyone who gets so close to making love but can't take the next step. Rid of cage a heart in a proud chest and brag just to flex but can't take the next step. I repeat it. <laughs> So nowadays, I'm petrified by everyone who gets so close to making love but can't take the next step. Rib cage a heart and a proud chest and brag just to flex like, yo, I'm down for whatever. But sorry.